G'day everyone, welcome back to another episode of Sailing Quick Creations where this week we are not restoring a 46 foot John Pugh motor sailor. So unfortunately, South Australia has gone into a state of lockdown. So we are all at home um, and we're not uh, going out and doing recreational activities. I am still an essential worker, so each day I still have to go to work, but it does mean that I can't get down to the boat uh, at the boat club and I can't do any additional work. So we can't exactly produce any more footage to put in this week's episode. So I thought I'd just pop in, say what the situation is, and I have actually been chatting to another YouTube content creator who's doing a boat restoration in the UK. And um, I did mention to him that I was gonna show him how to do a salt chloride test because he's about up to that stage. Um, so I have that here and I'm gonna run through a salt chloride test with everyone um, and uh, give just a little bit of in information and content for this week. Well, let's get into this uh, salt test and um, anyone who's working with any steel in any sort of salty or marine environment, um, if the coating breaks down, you get a chip here or there. Um, basically, the salt can, it could get drawn into the metal. Um, you can take all the paint off um, and you won't even see nothing. You won't see any salts. Um, they'll be there, but you won't know that they're there. So what ends up happening in a lot of cases um, with people that don't understand the process is that they'll strip the boat back to bare metal. They didn't realize that, you know, you had bubbles of corrosion here or there. Um, the coating has lifted in those areas and salt has been soaking up into that metal. So they'll do another paint job and it'll look great, but you know, a couple of years later you've got some bubbles showing everywhere and you don't know why because your paint should last 10 years. Uh, probably the reason why is because there's still salt inside the um, steel and what will end up happening is uh, the salt will um, delaminate those areas where the salt is It'll corrode, you'll get little corrosion bubbles all, all over your paint job. Um, especially the older boats, uh, especially in bilges, uh, you really need to test to make sure that you've got no salts left in your metal. Uh, even if you blast it, you, your salts might not all, all be gone. Um, you, you can blast it two or three times and it still may be there depending on how long that salt has been uh, soaking into your metal. So what you wanna do is get yourself a salt tip test. This is a salt chloride test. Uh, these ones are made by Elcometer and um, they're not cheap. I think a box of five is about a hundred dollars. Um, but I'd rather spend a hundred dollars and know that my paint is going to last 10 years than to have to spend another five thousand dollars on paint in two years. Um, so these are one of the easiest ways. You can get digital variants of these where you just um, you, you put a little um, patch and with a syringe you, in, you uh, put the chloride extraction serum into the uh, little patch and then you can put your digital device on. In the long run they're a cheaper unit because they, they're more expensive up front but each individual salt test it works out a lot cheaper. Uh, these are once off use and they have a use by date so if you don't use it in time um, it's no go. Uh, so basically in your pack You'll get a box, you get this little rubber squeezy thing which lets you draw up the, uh, the fluid a lot easier. You get this little device that will uh, seal up your little rubber uh, stuff. And then you got this little device which just a piece of steel with a three mil hole drilled into it and that will help you break off the tubes to expose the solvent inside. Inside your little packet, you've got what looks like a condom. Exactly like a condom, except for it has some foam, some memory foam on the top and some stickers to peel off. Then you get your chloride extract. So it's basically a chemical uh, which once you put on the substrate, we'll um, draw out all the salts from the steel um, and then you can measure the salts in the extract. And then you get your Kitigawa tube. So on the Kitigawa tube, it's got little intervals which read parts per million. Uh, it basically goes from zero to 60 parts per million. And um, 
you break off both ends and then uh, you sit that in your solution and then this the solution will be drawn up into the tube and then you can um, you can measure how much per, parts per million of salt that is on your steel. Now general rule of thumb, um, you want to have your salts less than three parts per million um, on a test sample. Uh, if there's anything more than that, um, you're probably gonna have problems with your paint. Uh, anything less than that, you know, ideally zero is achievable if you wanna spend the time washing your steel, but um, yeah, if, if you're doing a large bulky item like a, like a very large cargo ship or something, um, less than three is acceptable. So I'm gonna get a test sample. So I've got a piece of steel sitting in my marine fish tank. This, this water is perfectly uh, adapted to be salt water. That's my, why my fish and all my uh, corals are actually still alive. So that's a good, uh, good test sample. So I'll get that out. So I've had this test sample sitting in the salt water for a very long time. Uh, this steel is all I had laying around. It's actually not perfect for this test example because this is actually uh, chemically treated as a, it's a treated steel, which is corrosion resistant. And as you can see, it's been sitting in the salt water for a while and she's still perfect. Um, I used to restore old cars and this is the steel that I would use to uh, weld into the bodies. Um, it's perfect for that. It's probably not perfect for this test, but we're gonna see if we can find any salts. Now I've washed the surface down, so theoretically I should find some salts in this, um, but we'll see. So your first step here is to pour the solution, the chloride extract solution into your little condom device. And then just twist that off. So then we're just going to pour that in there. Doesn't matter if you get it all in there as long as you get enough to soak into the tube. We've got a little sticky layer that we've got to peel off. So you can just fold that over and stick it straight down or you can use your little sealing device here, pinch it nice and tight, lock it in so that you can stick that down without spilling it everywhere. Now it's important to push that down nice and firm so that you can get a seal around that ring. So that memory foam will go into any nooks and crannies and stay in that position so that it does create that seal. So once you think you've done a decent enough job, just allow that solution to pull up into that hole. Now, you've got a massage that for a little while that massaging gets all that it just moves all the fluid around so that you don't just have a concentrated bit and that all the fluid has a chance to extract that salt so we just move that around massage it onto the steel Just a couple of minutes, so that's probably good enough. Your next step 
is to get your Kitigawa tube. Now, you've got a yellow bit and an arrow and then all your numbers starting from one all the way up to 60 and it says they're parts per million. Um, so this particular tube, you grab your little hole and you basically slide it over the little knob there and then I like to put my thumb on there so that this ball doesn't go flying and then just break that off. You know, all these little glass splinter bits everywhere. Do it again on the next side. That one worked better. You still get little bits of shards of glass, so you've got to be careful of that. So you basically now have a tube with a hole either side. So we are going to take the chloride solution off. So I'm just going to lift that up, make it easier for myself, get all that fluid down the bottom. Now I'm going to peel it off. They never come off very well. You're always left with that little foam ring that's stuck on it. But that's what we have to deal with. So then you stick the yellow end down into your solution and then you can basically you need to wait one and a half minutes you can put this on here it speeds the process up so you can either put it in there and wait until the fluid comes up to that line you can speed the process up with this little suction cap pop that on there and you basically pump it until that solution I'll see if I can Lower that down so we can see. So we should be able to see that solution gets sucked up. You can see now that, that is changing from that pinky color to a brownie solution. So, you've got to wait one and a half minutes. See, we can now see that this is wet all the way from the bottom to the top and it's still climbing a little bit, but that's fine. It means it's got enough solution in there and we've just got to wait for that one and a half minutes to finish up uh, before we could take our readings on how much salts per, per, per million that's in here. So basically, you can almost see already that this little white marker is, is growing. Um, so the brown is is good area and this white area is changing and that's showing me that currently that there's three parts per million of salt on this steel plate, which is surprisingly acceptable. But uh, we haven't waited the full couple of minutes. But this is a steel plate that is um, designed not to have salt soak into it. Um, you can see that it's almost like a galvanized finish. Um, it's not galvanized, but uh, it's, it's similar. So I think that's going to finish up at about three parts per million of salt in, inside the grain structure of this uh, steel plate. Um, we, I'd probably wash that down uh, to to make it better than that. But um, yeah, that's 
that's in most industries a pass for a nice standard coating inspection. So the ways to remove the salt is you can keep blasting or you can high pressure water wash um, and that will get rid of the salt content in your steel. Um, but yeah, that's uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't have that on my boat. I'd wash that again just because the effort that you go to to paint your boat, you'd want to make it a little bit better. So that's as simple as that. So if you ever need to, to do another test, um, you can clamp that up, store that in the fridge somewhere, and uh, if you're a bit unsure, you can uh, you can retest that at a later date, um, and you can just store that like that. Um, so that's that test. Uh, hopefully that helps some people. And yeah, we'll see if uh, how my boat comes up uh, when I go to do this on mine. So that's the chloride test for um, detecting salt in steel uh, substrates. And just remember that uh, once you draw that solution in, it'll go brown. Um, at, but then from the zero to the one will start creeping up. Uh, that'll turn white and that'll indicate how much salt that you've got in your substrate. So unfortunately I can't uh, offer much more this week. We may not get a video out next week. Uh, we don't know how long this um, lockdown is going to keep going. Uh, the government today just announced that it could be extended. We don't know. Uh, so until I can get down to my boat, I don't have a lot more that I can put together. I am going to be doing a few bits on the laser machine, but um, yeah, it's not going to be enough to put in for another episode. So we'll probably just uh, have to give next week a miss if we can't get to the boat. Um, so if you want to know more about the salt test or any other coating inspections, I'm happy to answer any questions. Or if you want a more in-depth video about all of that, uh, let me know and I'll see what I can put together. And uh, yeah, let us know what you think. Sorry about all the, uh, all the delays and uh, we'll get back to everyone as soon as we can and get back to the boat. So hopefully everyone else is keeping safe and uh, let us know what you think and leave a comment. Thanks guys. Thank you.